this is uh this is Redbirds, and this is a video response with Lone Wolf versus the community. Um, there's a number of ways to go about it. I think, as Miami Prepper says, I think you could find yourself very much uh, being a lone wolf if you have to. I mean, if something just came right up on you, or something just happened, a catastrophe, or whatever could happen tomorrow. Um, I'm gonna start with the lone wolf. Is there's a couple things to think about a lone wolf. Lone wolf, you're by yourself. Um, I think it takes very, very few people can, could actually go up into a mountain by themselves with a couple of backpacks or whatever that can actually get out of a city. Um, I don't think it's really good to be a lone wolf is because solitude isn't really the greatest thing in the world. You get lonesome, we make a lot of wrong decisions by ourselves. Um, what if you what if you get a cut in your arm or you get infections? Um, Who's going to help you? I believe community uh, is the most important thing. Do I think a very large community? No. Um, look what happened to New Orleans back in 04. Look what they did to that football stadium. It was completely trashed. Look at, look at it on YouTube what the bathrooms look like. Um, if, if we're going to have a, a without rules of law, SHTF would happen. Um, we can't expect FEMA to help us, we can't expect the government to help us, there will be no police. Um, communities are going to be very important. Um, so much, you know, we need to assist each other. Um, I form my own community, a, a small group. I don't want to go to a large group is because I think things can get disorganized and really messed up, it can be very chaotic. I couldn't imagine myself going out to a football stadium or a football field or a campground where everybody else can just, when I'm not around, go into my tent or whatever I have. Um, small community, I've got, a, um, like myself, I've got uh, other former soldiers, retired and just like me, that we're going to provide security. I've got a family. I can't bug out. But I also don't live in a big city like New York City. I, I live in a city of 45,000 people. Um, how I'd run the community is with, I would have a council. I'd have all adults that are able to, you know, to make decisions, help make decisions. Um, it's great having my wife is because she's the yin to my yang. And what's important about that is that I might not make a good decision or if I'm not sure about something, she'll tell me, you know, Doug, you need, this is what you need to do. And other council members. There's things I'm not going to learn or know. And some communities are important that if you had a variety of people, it'd be nice to have doctors, nurses, um, some soldiers, or, or anybody. But I think your community has to be with people that are going to be productive. You can't just have somebody that comes to your community and does nothing. They just sit around and leech off you, eat all your food. I don't have, I'm not going to give somebody a, a firearm to walk a perimeter and they go downtown and decide to trade uh, a, a firearm for some food. You know, and that's another thing. Who do we let in our community? These are going to have to be people I know are trustworthy people. People with values. People also, other people I'd want in my communities, maybe like ministers or pastors, reverends. You know, because what's very important is that if something does happen if we have an economic crisis if there's a grid breakdown we have to have rules of law we have to have rules you know my community if somebody would goof off i suppose you know if we would just have to tell them they can't be part of it they have to leave or whatever um but the thing is is we have to maintain like the golden rule. We have to be considerate, caring, respectful, courteous. The golden rule. We have to help other people. Um, I think there's times with medical supplies and stuff like that, I think that needs to be pulled. Food, that could be probably more of an individual basis. I don't have a problem helping somebody else out. But um, there's plenty of people that I've told over the last several months they need to start prepping. And they have the financial means to do so, but they really don't think about what's going to happen next. I've had people literally tell me that, hey, you know, Doug, uh, I'm coming over to your house. Well, guess what? They're not. I'm not going to have somebody that, gee, they decide they're going to blow all their money on drugs or going out to eat steak 
every day for the last seven months and also when when it happens no they, they come to my house and they want food uh, maintain order is very important water we would have to have people um, it'd be nice to have a little bit of a mixture I wouldn't want to have all you know college babes in my community either I don't want any distractions um, it's more survival and maintaining you know a life but what I would but the big thing is, is that we have to maintain order virtues helping each other food whatever it'd be nice if we could pull our food but is it fair that i've prepped i got a, a couple of years prep or a year year and a half worth of food and somebody that doesn't have any food should i give them half of my food i think there's certain responsibilities families have to do by themselves another thing another bad thing i think remember this is only my perspective lone wolves have a disadvantage is because they're on the move so much i expect without rules of law that there's not going to be many vehicles that people are going to be driving. They're going to be on foot. Therefore, all they have is just a backpack. They, they don't have much to contribute. Would I turn people away? I would, some people I might, it would be an individual basis. I would like a council to help make decisions how we are going to run. What are we going to say? How are we going to do sanitation? We, we'd, have to have, we'd have to have members of the community and all that uh, maybe make outhouses. You know that are deep. We'd have to have people. We'd have to pull water together. We might have to send people. I don't live about a hundred feet from a river. I have to have people go down to the river, you know, with buckets, and we'd have to boil the water, put iodine in it. We'd have to filter it, um, but maintain or you know order and discipline. Without discipline, a community cannot hold. But if you get too many people, like in New Orleans, it can go really, really chaotic. The other advantage uh, a lone wolf might have is that um, the big problem is, is anytime there's a grid breakdown, the first things that happen is dysentery, cholera, infections, diseases, people can't wash up, take showers, take baths. Everything they have in their house is full of germs. People can get sick really, really quick. Look at the plague in the 14th, 15th centuries, what it did to Europe. People have to stay clean. But these are the things that, you know, are going to happen. Big communities, infections are going to spread. Look how bad we, uh, we had if, with a common cold. How many people get the cold or flu during the flu season? Yeah. Being by yourself could be a good thing, too, if you're single. You know, I'm not. I, I married five uh, teenagers. And there's no way we can just get up and leave or bug out. I lose probably 80% of all my food supplies, everything I have. And if I would bug out, where would I bug out to? A campground? And with a tent? You know? That's, you know, that's not really that good either. Um, stay in a house. You know, 20% of all people die because of just exposure outside. Just being outside in the rain, getting um, bronchial pneumonia and colds and infections and stuff like that and not keeping clean. But a community is very important is because it gives hope and support. Um, I'm not a nurse or a doctor, so if I get a cut on my arm, somebody can help me out very, very much. Um, there's other people that are more intelligent. We need, you know, there needs to be spiritual guidance from pastors or somebody that goes to church a lot um, because they strengthen our virtues and our faith. You know, um, by yourself, it's hard to make decisions. It's easier to take care of yourself if you have no responsibilities. You know, me, me being the husband and father, I have to take care of a lot of people. You know, and I have to think, I have to survive, because if I don't survive, my family can't survive. Uh, this is Redbirds Out. Thank you very much.